Well, the workplace is always evolving, but this past year we saw perhaps the biggest change to how and where we work. To get an idea of what the future workplace could look like, I spoke with Jamie Teven from Microsoft. Jamie has been researching the process of getting back to work and shared some of her insights with us. When you look at the research, um, about uh, the, sort of the ideal amount of time to work mm -hmm. from home is about two and a half days a week. So, so after about two and a half days a week at home, you start losing some of the social connections that you get from face-to-face -face interaction. Um, you see job satisfaction peak for people who work remotely at about 15 hours a week. Um, so there's this, there's this real opportunity with hybrid work for us to take what we've learned over the course of this past year about remote work and continue to use that as we return to the office and sort of start replacing some of the things that we've started to miss. From what you've learned and from talking to other colleagues, does working from home help or harm productivity or does it just depend on the person? It's interesting because that's one of the real things that we've learned over the course of the past year. You know, there was a pretty strong belief that people couldn't be productive while working from home. And what we've seen this past year is that people are able to still get things done while remote. There's, of course, individual variation and differences across people. Um, but all of the sort of standard metrics of productivity that you use for information workers um, have pretty much remained and remained stable or even gone up. And that's considering the fact that we're in the middle of a global pandemic with a lot of other things going on at the same time. Um, there's a lot of benefits to remote work in terms of what you're able to get done. You know, it's useful to focus. You don't have people running by your office, distracting you. Um, you know, there, there's a lot that you can do. It's really good for that focused work. Um, it's less good for the sort of long, like the, 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 the new ideas, the collaboration, the spontaneous conversations that we have. Um, so in, in some ways you can think of what we've been doing this past year is really um, spending down that social capital that we've built while being face-to-face -face, um, and taking advantage of it to, to be productive and focused. What should employees be thinking of moving forward when it comes to emotional wellness? I know that some people may be scared to return to the workplace. That social interaction might be a bit overwhelming at first. There's sort of many different components that we think about when we think about well-being or wellness. Um, there's affective well-being. So that's um, how are you feeling? The stress that we're all feeling about living in the middle of a pandemic, about our health and our safety, um, mm -hmm. the stress of figuring out how to work a new way, work remotely, um, you know, call in, be on, be on uh, remote calls all day. That, those all cause a lot of stress. Um, there's physical wellness, just thinking about like your own space. Yeah. I don't walk nearly as much. Like I come and sit in my office. And I don't move all day, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's something we need to think about. There's social well-being. And, um, and uh, you know, we've all been socially isolated for the past year. And, and that's highly correlated with productivity. Um, and there's cognitive well-being, your ability to focus and really think about getting things done. And that's hard to do when you've got kids bugging you for help with homework and people come into the door with packages or whatever, you know? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you are really all for going back to work, but like, what would you say to those folks who are maybe more reluctant? Yeah, well, so you're certainly seeing that there's an opportunity for people to start working remotely more. And like 46% of people are planning to relocate now that they can work remotely. Um, we also see uh, linked at, at, via LinkedIn that um, job postings on LinkedIn for remote jobs are up five times more. So there's an opportunity if you don't want to go into the office to figure out how to make that work. Um, but the, the, the real benefit comes from doing, doing a mix there. You know, we need to start thinking about um, how we can intentionally set up our time together, as well as our time that's remote um, to be successful. So like big meetings, those are actually great while remote. There's all sorts of benefits. We can all get access to the information. If, if we're not necessary at a big meeting, we can sit and check email without being rude or doing other things. Brainstorming meetings, on the other hand, are terrible 
when done remote. They're, they're really hard. Starting new things, that's hard to do remote. Those are the kinds of things, starting a new role, like super hard to start a new job, to meet people for the first time. We have like EEG studies that show your brain actually fires differently if you meet somebody for the first time remotely compared to if you meet them for the first time physically in a way that persists. So it actually, you have a, you have a kind of more stressful connection if you meet them for the first time remotely. So like when you meet somebody for the first time, it's best to do that in person because you're going to have a deeper, uh, like just cognitive connection. Everything she said was so fascinating.